This is The Chris Abraham Show. Hey there, this is Chris Abraham, and welcome to the very first episode of the Chris Abraham Show. This is this is he, Chris Abraham. This is I, c'est moi. And technically speaking, this is season four, episode three. But I just went on to Fiverr and officially changed the name to the Chris Abraham Show. And... Uh, I even went to Fiverr and ordered a um, do anything you want intro and outro. So I have no clue what that's going to sound like. It'll probably be in tomorrow's show. And I'm going to make them short and sweet. And I'm going to make them intimate. And I'm going to make them personal. And I'm going to make them short. And I will talk about any and all subjects because I want to do this every day. And if I do it every day, and if they're not short and just about whatevs, then I'm not going to be able to sustain it. So um, instead of waiting for the perfect muse, I'm going to do what any writer should do, which is write every day, uh, whether or not you're inspired by the muse. So after the uh, break, I'll be back and I'll talk to you soon. Thanks for being here, and I've got someone at the table next to me, so that's just part of the ambiance, isn't it? Welcome back, welcome back, welcome back. This is the Chris Abraham Show. My name's Chris Abraham, and today is about the Queen is Dead, Long Live the King. Because uh, yesterday, Queen Elizabeth uh, passed away at 96, is it? And uh, the entire world is talking about it. They're not talking about... Trumpgate, they're not talking about the insurrection, they're not talking about Ukraine, uh, they're not talking about September 11th, which is funny because it's today, September 9th. I don't know if you can hear that, but it's the, uh, so many alarms, I, I feel like I'm living in ed to end times, but because I apparently wear such rainbow glasses that I don't see uh, the madness around me. But I'm aware of it in the macro and in the micro, just not in my happy little bubble. I'm looking around and I'm in uh, Walter Reed Community Center Park and behind me there are pickleball slash tennis courts and there's picnic tables and people eating and talking and chatting and with their dogs and um, my little sexy South Arlington Shangri-La. Anyway, so the topic today is about the Queen and my feedback on the Queen. And I don't really have that much, but I'm going to share with you everything that is Queen related in my little head. So right after the break, we'll be back and we'll talk about Queen Elizabeth.
So, I grew up as a New York, New Jersey kid in Hawaii, and the Queen didn't have any at all existence in my head until the year that Diana was married, and then the wedding between Diana and Prince Charles uh, washed all the way to Honolulu, all the way to, to Kaimuki on Oahu. And the pageantry, you know, washed over all of America um, in the same way that the whole Diana death thing, you know, that really was when the whole thing kind of entered into my consciousness. Not, you know, when I was 16, of course, I hated the monarchy and I used to uh, listen to a lot of uh, sex pistols and I, you know, used to... Um, say things like, God save the queen, dun, 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 dun. the fascist regime, dun, dun, dun. no solution, and all that kind of stuff. But it was, you know, it was just farce. I really didn't have any perception. The thing that I know is that uh, I've always been, you know, because of my parents, I've always been a Monty Python, uh, Monty Python ang anglophile, right? Um, half of the television I watched growing up was uh, Benny Hill and Are You Being Served and um, you know Monty Python and we didn't get Doctor Who or anything like that but you know that kind of world of Britain I remember my mom loved watching Are You Being Served uh, that show is so campy and silly and I uh, couldn't have been more titillated as a young teenager as I was when, you know, watching um, Benny Hill. Such loud neighbors. So loud. Anyway, and so that was my, you know, my only experiences, being in love with Benny Hill and, um, and uh, of course, being in Hawaii, the spam song was always such a big deal uh, when that came out and and then I went to university, you know, in my Anglophilia, um, which, you know, started with love of uh, literature and Western culture and music. Um, continued when I studied American literature and then, uh, and then actually went to study abroad for a year, my junior year, at the University of East Anglia in Norwich. And, uh, even then, you know, students, students at that time back in, you know, 1990, 1991 were very anti-monarch, very anti-monarchy. I mean, you know, even though, you know, any university people in, in England are, are at the edge of ponciness, especially in the late 80s, early 90s, none of them wanted to be. Anybody who had a poncy accent would try to um, cover it up you know, sell their, uh, sell their nice car and buy a, a du, um, a, um, a du cheveux, a Citroen or something, you know, working man kind of deal. And even the art history students were not into, um, making it plain as to which side of the, uh, class system they were on. It was very chic, uh, to penny cars which is their term for keying cars. Uh, it was very much anti-wealth, anti-rich, which is antithetical to what I believe modern Great Britain, or at least modern Great Britain of the last 30 years had been, which, you know, was very pro-hypercar, very pro-Aston Martin and Maserati and Bugatti, and of course pro Rolls-Royce and Bentley. But, um, you know, I didn't visit any castles. Um, the one thing I do remember is any time I've ever been around British people and when I lived there and whenever I've been there near the holidays, um, people are always completely to this day obsessed with the, um, the Queen's message.
the Queen's Christmas, I think Christmas Day message or Boxing Day message. Um, she's a very real voice in, in the British public, whether they love her or, or hate her. Um, she she is not political and she is, you know, that's a load of crap. You know, if you have their hearts and minds, uh, or if you, if you have them by the balls, their hearts and minds do follow. And, you know, the Queen has, I mean, I can't believe how much Queen love uh, my Canadian friends are showing and anybody in the Commonwealth. And um, it's shameless, really. And, and because in the same way that Twitter's like, we're not a government, we're a private company. So don't look at us when we censor your tweets. We're just being good citizens. The Queen and the Crown uh, surely gets away with a lot of um, a lot of audacious things under the guise of we're just simple figureheads. Um, that's like saying that American billionaires are just simple figureheads. That saying that um, Elon Musk or Bezos, Jeff Bezos, etc., are just simple, you know just rich people I mean the the power and influence and and global excitement the grand celebrity uh, the only person who could rival the Queen is possibly you know Queen B or maybe uh, a, a, a Kardashian or maybe Oprah um, other than that uh, maybe not even J.K. Rowling. Look at her getting canceled. Um, I mean, even now, even in the worst of my, I mean, I loved living in England. It was so, it really was quaint. People really embraced their Dickensian nature. I remember visiting my buddy Paul, his family in Cardiff, Wales. And the entire time his dad was going on and on about how Dick Dickensian their Christmas was and how what a simple soul he was. And Paul's dad was the kind of fellow who built um, real steam engines the size that you can put them on rails and sit on them, straddle them like motorcycles and ride kids around uh, around a park kind of nerd. Um, and they just love it. Like there are cultures, maybe not in London, but there are the reason why um, the cultures that seem to thrive in this world are cultures where nerds are cool. Uh, I don't even understand why America is remotely successful. I, I dare say that only 20% of, of America thinks nerds are cool. But luckily, they all live together, they all go to school together, they all matriculate together, they all marry each other, they live in the same cities and enclaves and so forth. So the only reason America is successful is because of the 20% of the kids who, you know, who graduate well from high school, who graduate well from college, who graduate well from grad school, and who have a little bit of access to multi-generational wealth. It doesn't need to be um, nosebleedy. It doesn't need to be the new definition of rich, which is someone worth over a hundred million dollars. It can be the level of rich where um, the family makes four or five hundred K, which is now defined loosely as middle class. So if you think you're middle class and your family is making less than four or 500K, you are poor. You are working class, you are lower middle class, or you are uh, upper lower class. So, or you're just poor. $75,000 a year, uh, that's, just, that's just holding on. Uh, especially if there's no savings associated with that. Uh, just, just so you know. So now, uh, people are coming in defense of the Queen as a manifestation of all 
that is civil and all that is civilized and all that is cultured and all that is moral and all that and everything in the world that is based on law and order and norms and respect and trust and faith and this shameless opportunity to uh, to 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 speak out loud and openly about your faith or your Western uh, notion or your appreciation of Western culture, Western values, uh, Judeo-Christian values of um, belief in civility and respect and deferment and uh, all these other things. It's going to drive people crazy because the last 10 years has all about, been about, in my opinion, dismantling these norms, saying that these Western um, elitist BBC English speaking royal monarchical cultural mores are antithetical to the will of the people and the will of the people uh, believes that sometimes you gotta take what you need sometimes you just gotta sometimes the rules are just there to catch you uh, their attempts at uh, castrating a diverse or gelding a diverse cultural landscape. Um, it's basically, in my opinion, an attempt at saying lawlessness is a cultural choice. Um, violence is a cultural choice. Um, Anti-social behavior, disrespect for authority, um, larceny, riot, stealing, all these things are just cultural mores he held by, sorry, mores, cultural mores held by uh, other cultures, other peoples, um, and so forth, which sounds to me less like equity and more like a disgusting brand of noblesse oblige, which is to say um, other cultures besides the Western cultures, they just can't help themselves. They, by their very nature, have an inability to control their baser desires and needs. And we need to uh, empower them because there's, you know, there's nothing one can do uh, against them except for putting people uh, poorly enculturated, poorly uh, normalized, poorly integrated, uh, poorly assimilated people of, of ignorance and a lack of learning. The only other option is to put them all in jail. And that is not, that is not equitable. That is not, that is against God and against faith and against man. And it's a trap and one shouldn't put uh, people who don't know any better into a trap where they need to waste their lives incarcerated for uh, corporate profit. So, on that note, I thought I'd make sure that this conversation was light. Uh, as I do not script this, obviously, I don't know what I'm actually saying until I listen to the show afterwards. Um, so this is going to be really interesting. It's going to be... A, as people more and more uh, are passive aggressively out and proud about the fact that they support not only a monarchy but Christianity, sort of a Western more, um, more, more uh, Western norms, uh, a belief that that um, that the crown civilized the world, that the crown gifted a bunch of um, unappreciative peoples around the world gifted them with civilization uh, infrastructure government, democracy education training 
vocation and so forth, it's going to get really colonialism and anti-colonialism, racism and anti-racism, white supremacy and, and anti-white supremacy out there. I don't know how it's going to manifest, but it's already manifested in a lot of people on Twitter saying that they wish the Queen would die uh, in a painful death. And these are university professors. Uh, university uh, tenured professors and intellectuals and so forth and just as many people quite possibly many of whom are Trump Republicans or just you know dumb folk who like pageantry and think the Queen was so lovely um, this can become a real point of contention you know I mean and then now there's a king I've never known a, uh, a Britain with a king. And not only that, but it's, uh, there couldn't be a more controversial figure than the Druid known as Prince Charles, now King Charles III. Uh, there's nobody more contentious than uh, the pro-climate uh, activism, pro-green, um, standard bearer, uh, he is the he is the um, he is the epitome of of uh, Green Party. Um, uh, he is he is Great Britain's Al Gore for sure. He is Great Britain's um, uh, what's her name um, Gretchen. He's a uh, Gretchen Gretchen. Anyway, it's going to be really interesting. This is much more than. This is just an excuse for people to talk about other things. This is going to be about colonialism and anti-colonialism. This is going to reflect very strongly um, in many places like New Zealand and South Africa. And this is going to reflect very strongly in places uh, like Australia and uh, Hong Kong. And it's going to reverberate in, in places like um, like the Caribbean and um, and just it's going to be it's going to reverberate in a lot of places and and it's going to reverberate I, I I talk about growing up in Hawaii as being so far away from the crown but if you go onto the internet right now and search for a Hawaiian flag you'll notice right away that there's um, that that the Hawaiian flag has been um, kissed strongly by by the Union Jack and that um, and that Hawaii was discovered by uh, by the crown um, and that it was civilized and uh, modernized and so on and so forth by the by the British um, I'm saying this intentionally being bombastic because uh, the Brits and then following with the Americans um, were appalling to the Hawaiian monarchy King Kalakaua and Queen Liliokalani and I can't believe I remember their names um, but uh, but even they had a monarchy, and even they come from a bloody tradition where, um, this is a complete tangent, but um, King, uh, uh, <laughs> King uh, Ali, uh, blah, 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 blah. King Kamehameha, uh, was uh, the Saddam Hussein of the Hawaiian Islands, you know. He took uh, islands that were uh, separate tribes, separate islands, separate monarchies, separate um, chiefdoms, um, entirely broken apart, completely bifurcated, and he, through the force of his will and the force of his uh, sword and spear, um, united the islands. There's stories, bloody stories, of him throwing people off of off of uh, what we call Pali, uh, which is you know giant cliffs in the mountains. I mean, he was a a bloody uniter, um, 
and we we revel in him. King Kamehameha has uh, nobody's knocked down the King Kamehameha statues in Oahu, even though he uh, united the islands in blood. Um, and one might say that uh, Great Britain united the world in blood. Um, or one might say Great Britain united the world in, in, uh, in business, in trade, in, in market forces. Uh, who knows? Anyway, I, you know, it's uh, about the Queen, but it's not about the Queen. It's about the monarchy. It's not about the monarchy. It's about Queen Elizabeth. It's not about Queen Elizabeth. And it's about Ukraine, but never about Ukraine. It's about 9-11. It's never about 9-11. And this podcast is about just about nothing at all. So... Love you guys. Thanks for coming. After this, I will maybe tease what I might do the next time. Although there's no guarantee that I'm not just saying things I won't remember the next time in front of this Olympus WS853. But I'll be right back to you. Mahalo. Welcome back to the Chris Abraham Show. My name is Chris Abraham, and this is how to contact me. Send me hate mail. Uh, It's chris at abraham.su or plus one two oh two three five two five zero five one. If you want to reach me via text or signal or WhatsApp um, or any of those things and telegram too and I don't know what else. Then you can find me at Instagram.com slash Chris Abraham, Twitter.com slash Chris Abraham, YouTube.com slash Chris Abraham, Twitter.com slash Chris Abraham. Did I say Facebook.com slash Chris Abraham? Uh, ChrisAbraham.com. And you can even call me at plus one two zero two three five two five zero five one. But unless... Oh! Calendly, C A L E N D L Y dot com slash Chris Abraham slash 15, and you'll be able to schedule a call just to say hello. I am open to the world until the very moment I'm completely and utterly popular, in which case I will hide in a hidey hole and collect my checks. Love you guys. Talk to you tomorrow to try to make this bad boy daily. Hugs and kisses. Auf Wiedersehen. A tout à l'heure. Aloha, mahalo, ciao, tschüss, tschüssi, hasta luego, hasta mañana, um, and arrivederci, ciao. Thank you for listening to The Chris Abraham Show. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any future episodes. Until next time.